Claire here, aka Miss Dress, and your very own personal fashion stylist. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the four unforgivable fashion and style mistakes that you might be making because, okay, you know what? We're all allowed to make mistakes every once in a while, especially when it comes to getting dressed. But there are just these four that you really, really, once you know that you're making a mistake with them, you shouldn't be making them again and again. So here I wanna help you rectify these mistakes and ensure that this is your path to becoming a better dressed woman. I have to say that whenever I meet with my in-person clients for the very first time, it never fails to amaze me how often they'll be wearing an item of clothing a size or two too big for them. Their thinking behind that is that wearing something looser actually conceals their lumps and bumps. The exact opposite is happening. Nine times out of 10, when you wear something that's looser and baggier, what you're actually doing is that big expanse of fabric is all somebody can see. The moment you start to wear things that are a little bit more slimmer cut, you actually appear slimmer. None of my clients can believe this when I say, right, you need to go down a size in this particular garment. They're like, oh gosh, no, I've, I've always worn a, worn a so-and-so size. Sometimes you need to be flexible because remember, brands and retailers, their sizes differ so much between store to store. You can be a size 12 in one, a size 14 in another, and a size 10 in another. So make sure that you try on that variety of sizes to find the right one that's for you. And if in doubt, go that little bit more slimmer cut because I guarantee that is what is gonna make you look slimmer, not going up the size and thinking that you're gonna conceal those lumps and bumps. Now, I understand, my goodness me, I really do, that shoes need to be comfortable. Of course they do. But sometimes what happens is that women, or us women, can outweigh the practicality of a shoe and the comfort and forget about the fact that maybe it doesn't quite work with this outfit. You've really got to ask yourself the question, does this actually go with my outfit? There are so many comfortable shoe options out there now. Trainers, for instance, have become so fashionable and so stylish that if you require a flat, very, very comfortable shoe, that could be your saving grace. And likewise, there are so many fabulous brogues and loafers in a flat style that will equally work better than that sort of slightly orthopedic shoe that you might be donning at the moment. First of all, let's talk about knickers because those are the ones that really, really get me. If you are wearing something that shows visible panty line, please make sure that you're wearing knickers appropriate to that. So for instance, what I, what I find really frustrating with a lot of women is that they'll wear the same style of um, knickers with every single outfit. Well, you can't actually do that. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to wear a thong with every single outfit. Fit, but what I am saying is that you need to invest in some seamless underwear so that if you are wearing something that's more fitted, especially trousers, that you don't get this line. Not only is it ugly, but it also makes your bottom look bigger as well. It makes it look wider because now we've got this triangular shape going on on the back of your bottom and then we've got the fabric. So now you're drawing all attention to that area of your body. It's not flattering. The same applies with bras. You need to make sure that you are measured on a regular basis. I suggest every six to 12 months and that you replace your bras definitely on a 12 monthly basis. The reason being that bras 
they are worn so frequently, the elastic goes in them. And so when they stop supporting your bust, that's when clothes no longer look flattering over the top of a bra. Your underwear is your foundations to your outfit. So if you think about it in the form of, say, like a house, if you haven't got solid foundations in place, your whole outfit is going to crumble to the ground. The style at the moment is that rather than piling on earrings, necklace, bracelet, it's less is most definitely more. You choose one area of your body to focus accessorizing. So it could be a pair of statement earrings, which then you just wear a very simple, delicate necklace, if at all, and then maybe a delicate bangle or ring, or maybe nothing there, just let the earrings be the statement in themselves. The same applies if you're wearing a statement necklace. Let that necklace do the talking. Leave ears with either no earrings or very, very small studs. Likewise, if you're a big fan of cocktail rings, just let those be your one accessory. Don't overload it with then stuff going on up here. Because what happens is your outfit becomes unbalanced. There's far too many focal points for somebody to look at, which then sends them a confused message about you. You're giving them too much information that they need to take in. And consequently, they become very sort of picky about your outfit. So just keep accessories focused to one area. Okay, so I hope that you found these tips useful and if you were committing or are committing any of these mistakes, you've realized how easy it is to rectify them and what a difference it's going to make to your style in order to keep it much more current and fresh and most certainly help to improve it. Now, if you would like more of my tips and advice, make sure you subscribe to the Miss Dress YouTube channel Likewise, if you want to come and join over 400 women inside my private community where I post videos on a very regular basis full of extra practical tips just like these in here, then come on inside because you are most welcome. You'll find the link in the description below this video. Until next time, stay stylish.